How many of you know who Richard Feynman was? Okay, one of the greatest physicists of our time. He got a Nobel Prize for uh, teaching us, predicting that uh, what we thought were elementary particles, protons and neutrons, that they were made up of something smaller, the quarks. And he gave us uh, color chromodynamics, uh, quantum chromodynamics, I should say. And he was really a very um, interesting individual. He was known for not being able to sleep, and so he would roam around uh, when he was on the uh, he was on the project to build the atomic bomb, and he he would roam around the lab and find out what people were working on. People would come in in the morning and find their problem solved. He did the same thing at Caltech when he was a uh, professor there. I was able to watch him teach once. When I was at MIT as a graduate student, I heard that the great Richard Feynman was coming to give a guest lecture on quantum mechanics. I wanted to, I wanted to get a good seat, so I went an hour early. I found that the great big huge lecture hall was packed. I had to stand in the back. It was an hour and a half. It was the most profound lecture I have ever experienced. I will never forget that experience. Um, it turns out that Richard Feynman taught for many, many years at Caltech, and he always taught the courses for the graduate students that had very few students. One year they came to him and they said, you know, Richard, we'd really like you to teach the freshmen, teach the introductory physics class. We think that they would benefit from that. So he agreed and showed up, and when he showed up the first day, the big lecture hall was packed, just like at MIT. The freshmen were there, but also the grad students were there, and the postdocs were there, and a lot of professors were there. And he started giving introductory physics lectures. Now, a couple months into the semester, the room wasn't so packed. The professors were still there, the grad students were still there, the postdocs were still there, but most of the freshmen had dropped out. He had pitched that just a little bit too high. Now, one of his friends copied, or I'm sorry, recorded all of his lectures, and then later put them into a three-volume set called the Feynman Lectures on Physics. Now, this is where physicists go to learn physics. When they're confused about a concept, they go to the master and they watch how he teaches it. And then these books are, to me, priceless. Well, I want to share with you something out of volume one, chapter four, and this was right at the beginning when the freshmen were still in the class. And he was trying to teach those freshmen about energy. And he told them a story about a young boy, a little bit spoiled, his name was Dennis the Menace. And his mother was a little bit controlling. Now Dennis had 28 identical blocks. And every day his mother would come in and count those blocks to make sure they were always there. And every day she'd be happy when she saw all 28. Now one day she came in, there was only 26. She looked all over, only 26. Then she noticed the open window. She looked out the window and there on the grass were two blocks. She went out, she got the blocks, she closed the window and she boarded it up. She nailed it shut. She's controlling. The next day, she counted the blocks and she found that there were three extra blocks. How can this be? Then she realized that uh, Bruce had come over to play, Dennis's friend, and he had brought three of his blocks. So she, she sent Bruce home with his blocks and she said he's forbidden from ever coming back to play. She's controlling. Now that went fine. She always counted 28 blocks every day until one day she only got 25. Now she searched everywhere, she couldn't find the extra blocks, and then she saw a toy box that was closed. She went to open the toy box, she knew those blocks were in there, and Dennis said, no, you may not open the toy box. He's a brat. But mother's clever, and she waits for a day when she sees all 28 blocks. She takes the toy box, the empty toy box, she weighs it, it has a, a weight of 16 ounces. She takes one block, she weighs it, it has a weight of three ounces. And then, whenever she comes in to count the blocks, 
If she doesn't see 28, she weighs the toy box, keeps it closed, she can't open it. She subtracts off the weight of the empty toy box. The difference has to be blocks. She divides by the number of, of ounces in a block, and she gets 28 every single time until she does it. And then she notices that the bathtub has dirty water, so dirty you can't even see blocks that are submerged. So she waits until she can count all the blocks. She takes one block and she drops it into the dirty water. She sees that the level of the water raises from six inches to six, six and a quarter inches. And then she revises her equation. This is the number of blocks she can see on the floor. This is the number of blocks that are hidden in the uh, toy box. And these are the number of blocks that are hidden in the dirty water. Now, the great Richard Feynman turned to his freshman and he said, what does this have to do with energy conservation? And he said the first most important thing is that there are no energy blocks that you can see. You can't look at an energy block, oh, it's green. All the energy is hidden. It's either hidden in the toy box or hidden in the bathtub. Or in our case, it's hidden in the kinetic energy or it's hidden in the gravitational energy. It's just this profound principle that if you add up all these formulas, you always get the same number. As long as Bruce doesn't come over to play and we board the windows shut. Now what does that have to do with energy? Well, the windows and Bruce are how energy comes into the system or goes out of the system. The only way you can change energy, well, there's two ways. You can do Werk on the system. That's what we've got in our equation. The second way is you can light a candle underneath it. You can use an open flame. You can add heat energy. Now, they tell you all about that over in the chemistry department, and I'm happy to let them teach you that. In this class, we're only going to worry about Verk. We're going to ignore any heating as something that uh, chemistry will have. Okay? But the important thing is, if you can find these formulas that tell you where the energy is hidden, then nature will allow you to use that to solve problems. Okay? 